New York City's rooting system was an amazing web, and the sector tandems were the part we understood first. So I'll bring you along on the journey we took in understanding how it works, and we'll hear some beautiful sounds along the way. Originally, the sector tandems were used primarily by the suburbs calling into New York City and the crossbar fives within the city calling everywhere in the downstate area. Now, I recorded some calls that reflect the original way that sector tandem sounded, and here are some calls from Mamaroneck, New York, which is in Westchester County, it's a crossbar five, calling into Bushwick Tandem to its DID codes, 240, 270, and 630. Sounding pretty much like 1970 here, because these calls are going direct over N1 carrier from the Mamaroneck office to Bushwick, and then it dial pulses into whatever PBX is appropriate for the number group being dialed. In New York City, there were many PBX rings, but most of them fell into one of three categories, and this is what I would call the low-frequency ring. Later, we'll hear the high-frequency ring. Is this what it sounds like? Yes, this is an intercept line in a PBX. Just happened to dial into it. Here's a conference. All I would have to do is start dialing around and finding other individual numbers that go into this, then call friends and fill it up. It's amazing. This busy signal belongs to either the high type ring or the low type ring. The busy signals of these two ringtones are very hard to tell apart because they have the same basic tone. There are just subtle differences in the overtones. This is the high type PBX ring. This and the one we heard earlier covered most step and even some crossbar PBXs in the bell system. But in New York City, there was a third type ring that sounded like a rural CDO office. This is a test tone within one of the PBXs.
This time we've just been left high and dry. A bad connector switch or an open sleeve, perhaps. Let's listen to the trunk noise. Did you hear those MFs? It was 10-something. Couldn't make out the last digit. This is probably a main number since Bushwick dialed only two digits. Next is a recording in Bushwick itself for a changed Centrex. tone you're hearing is a dial tone. Actually, one of the lines on intercept still has outgoing service. This is a recording. And it's hooked up backwards. So people who call intercept when that happens tend to get charged for the call as we did. And you hear the dial tone and it never times out because it's a step line. Here are some calls to the Bushwick sector, this time not to PBXs, but to regular exchanges. This was a crossbar one that Bushwick MF'd into, and there's nothing like a number one crossbar reorder. You can always tell. It just... It just sounds like that. The next call features a ringtone that has reorder in the background, again from a crossbar one that Bushwick MF's to. The next two calls are Bushwick RPing to a crossbar one. I get an answering machine and I hang up on it. Then when I call back, I seize the same trunk from Bushwick to the end office. And notice what happens on the second call. General Dyke. 
that is a number one crossbar and number five crossbar thing that doesn't come up on the preservation tapes too often. But when an incoming call hangs up in number one and number five crossbar and you stay off hook, if the trunk is reseized within 20 seconds, there is a moment after the number is sent that you actually hear the incoming caller and you can talk for just an instant and then the marker comes in and switches to the line that's really being called. Here's another one of those recorded on that same day. By the way, Ben and I discovered a means that pretty much nobody else discovered in the mid-70s where we could make that moment where you're connected to the uh, incoming caller last forever. And if you were on crossbar five, it was non-soup. We actually found a way to force that to happen. It was totally cool. Only worked on revertive pulse incoming. If I try to explain that here, I'll go way off topic, but anyway. So originally, the suburbs had N-type carrier to Bushwick, unless they were real close in, like Lindbrook. And here's another suburb that has N-3 family carrier, except in this case it is Newdorp, Staten Island. Sorry to say it, but Staten Island was treated more like a suburb than a part of the city by New York Telephone back in the 1970s, but at least it wasn't treated like New Jersey. Actually, that would have been a good thing because New Jersey tended to use Gotham Tandem for the entire city, and Gotham Tandem was really cool because it was super old and managed to do things the old way just about no matter what. But anyway, we're concentrating on Bushwick now, and here are some calls from New Dorp, Staten Island to the Bushwick sector going over N3 family carrier. This is recorded from a coin phone. It's a crossbar 5 office. You'll hear it using coin junctors. This ring from the Troy Avenue panel is one of the oldest rings in the city, we think. And there's a lot of circumstantial evidence to suggest that most, if not all, of the panels maybe were installed with this ring. Let's call Machine Intercept in Troy.
This is the ring from the intercept concentrator. You know, it sounds like the Richmond Hill ring, although it might be the Fairview ring. I'm a little rusty on this. There were five concentrators in the area serving the SAIS. And sometimes the operators just wouldn't answer. They were too busy. This end carrier trunk, by the way, which we keep getting, is on a system that sounds just a little out of tune. Usually it sounded better than this. The next call gets a better trunk. Whoa, had to hang up on that one. That was the Fairview Avenue panel, 326 code, supervision test, and actually that sounds like the supervision test designed for a crossbar office, not a panel office. And for some reason those flashes in the middle just were not working right, and so Ben had to hang up prematurely. He couldn't let the test complete. Now to get a supervision test that's working better, let's go back to the Troy Avenue panel. Well, that's a lot better, but the timing was still fast for a panel office, but at least the supervision test worked all the way through. That was sort of a morph between the supervision test you usually find in panels and the kind you find in crossbar. And speaking of crossbar, Troy Avenue had a number one crossbar, which also had an unusual ring. Wow, now there was the sound that well, something a panel selector does if it's not controlled right by the calling office. That sound actually happened earlier this night when we were in New Dorp recording this. And usually we used to hear this sound when we would deliberately set up a crossbar tandem and a panel to have a, a malfunction by adding extra digits and that would cause the crossbar tandem to stop controlling the panel selector it would make a noise like that and then the crossbar tandem would just go to the recording that says your call did not go through but tonight it happened naturally with our just dialing a number normally and this is really odd <laughs> one of the panels in the Bushwick sector. It goes through to Bushwick tandem on a T-carrier trunk this time. It makes that noise, then starts to go to a busy signal. You hear the busy signal in the background, and as soon as the ring trips, there's a conversation on the line. The call goes off hook, and Ben hangs up to save his dime. Now, 
that was really bizarre. The final switch acted as if it had not had its brush selection made, and it just kind of makes that noise if you don't stop it. And it went to a busy, and before we knew it, we were in someone's conversation. So there was a real problem in the panel office, and I'll bet you that that exact thing is what we heard on the supervision test in the clicks here. Hmm, sounds like the same event, but not the exact same switch because it has a slightly different pitch. Oh, goodness. But I think that's what it is. Anyway, back to the Troy Crossbar 1, we were going to call the soup test there. Ah, uh, what a totally cool and ancient sounding ring. And actually, 772, the first crossbar one in New York City, rang like this. It was in this building. Here's another crossbar one. joke about the E6 repeaters that were used to amplify the wire trunks, because if they were turned up too loud, they would go E. Now this time, we got the flaky trunk to Bushwick. It sounds like it's a little off kilter. And then to the end office, we got the trunk that has the oscillation on it with the E6. That tick there is our going back into the queue for the operator to come back. She'll say, special operator, what number are you calling? But it's very late at night, and we're not going to wait this time.
Well, we've gotten the tea carrier trunk to Bushwick, but nothing's happening. The recording ID is 21231, but sometimes you get a distorted reorder instead of a recording, and that's what we're going to get this time. Actually, this reorder is very loud, but not as distorted as what we usually hear from Bushwick. Anyway, Bushwick and Tremont both date back to 1963. Like Tremont, Bushwick usually MFs to crossbar fives, but here's one it RPs to, as recorded from Newdorp. Before we leave the payphones of Newdorp, whose phone numbers begin with 3519, let's call 3519979 locally. This was a loop checker test tone that was special, i.e. abnormal. Normally, a loop checker test tone sounds like this. But the Newdorp loop checker always reminded me of the 1960s TV sound of a ghost trying to scare someone, especially coming over the N1 carrier. Well, locally, it's not going to have that creepy N1 sound to it. So let's see what it sounds like locally. You know, listening to it locally, it doesn't sound as creepy, but Somewhere here, there really is a normal loop checker tone playing. We don't hear it, however. What we're hearing is the beat between that loop checker tone that is normal and this solid, steady tone that is present here. What went wrong with the equipment to make it do that, I don't know. All right, let's go home to Lindbrook 9, crossbar 1, and dial a crossbar 5 intercept number in Newtown, Bushwick Sector. several Queens offices, including Newtown, but mostly offices on the eastern edge of Queens, installed recordings like this to take the load off of the intercept concentrators. A similar thing was done throughout Bell System, North Carolina, to deload the Charlotte AIS. Thank you. This is the recording. I'm sorry. The number... 
That connection had sort of a classic New York City wire trunk sound. Let's play it again. Thank you. This is the recording. Ah, the wire trunks. So many in New York City. And that's what made it possible for me to hear my ESS tone in Brooklyn so clearly at my house. This is what the tone really sounded like. Came all the way from Brooklyn to my house in the Lindbrook area. But in 1971, when I would call this up, I started getting this instead. It sounded awful. And I thought the tone itself had changed and something had gone wrong with it. But of course you know what it was. My trunks to Bushwick tandem changed from wire to T-carrier. The modern system, which made the modern tones sound like crap. But then it actually got better. In late 1973, a major routing change occurred for the crossbar fives in Nassau County. Prior to that date, all the crossbar fives in Nassau had used Bushwick tandem. Wire trunks for the close-in offices like Lindbrook, end carrier trunks for the farther out offices like Farmingdale, And then, around 1971, most of those trunks got replaced by T-Carrier, and that made the tone sound like crap. Well, in 1973, all of a sudden it started going through like this. Now, to me, this is a lot better. See, what's happened now is we're on T-Carrier, that adds fuzz, but for the most part conveys truly the actual sound that's underneath it. The fuzzy noise is added, but you can actually hear that bell-like ringing noise there. The Bushwick T carrier was so distorted you couldn't even hear that rhythmic ringing. And so, this new connection was my first experience with T-Carrier that made life better. It's because the previous T-Carrier sucked so bad. It still, though, was not like the original route. When you can get an analog connection like this, from Brooklyn all the way to Lynn Brook, You've really got something. Can't do that now. The new route was a 4A. Originally referred to as Nassau 4A, it got renamed Garden City. And for us in Nassau County, Garden City replaced four tandems. Bushwick. Brooklyn, our route for central Brooklyn. Kings, our route for downtown Brooklyn. Two, one, two, three, two. And unfortunately, VZ Tandem 1, our route for northern New Jersey. Two, one, two, six. That last one hurt because we had nice end carrier trunks to VZ Tandem 1. And seeing that replaced with the T carrier of Garden City. I'm sorry, the number you have dialed has either been disconnected or not assigned. If you think you could have dialed incorrectly, please try again. Thank you. My voice has been recorded. It just doesn't sound the same on T-Carrier now, does it? So the lesson was, things change. 
Those four crossbar tandems each were unique in their own way. You could hear the outpulsing, even through the lousy tea carrier on the first three I mentioned. And instead it was replaced with this 4A where everything was just kind of the same. You would just hear dull tea carrier noise followed by a tick and your call would be connected. You wouldn't hear MFs anymore or revertive pulsing unless that 4A happened to be using a second tandem, which it usually didn't. But interestingly, at least for us, because we were very interested in the routing pattern, all four of these tandems had not been removed from the network. They were just shifted in who used them. In the next program, I'll give you a before and after on the 1973 routing change in Nassau County calling New York City. Then we'll gravitate toward crystal clear, perfect analog audio as I introduce you to two of the Centrex tandems. That's next.